Hey, I'm Dan Harris, and uh, as a reporter who often covers issues of faith, I've met many evangelical Christians who are dead set against the theory of evolution. In fact, I've been down to the Creation Museum in Kentucky, where they have a big display that shows dinosaurs coexisting with Adam and Eve in the Garden of Eden. Now comes Dr. Francis Collins, who's a devout Christian and also a very serious scientist. In fact, he led the charge to map the human genome. And Dr. Francis Collins has a new mission, which is to take on his fellow believers on the issue of evolution. I have to imagine that some evangelicals get very upset with you. I've certainly gotten some emails that curled my hair. Really? <laughs> I've been called a wolf in sheep's clothing. I've been excommunicated a couple of times, although I'm not Catholic. I mean, people do get pretty upset about this. How do you, as a devout Christian, square your scientific beliefs with what it says in Genesis? I like the idea that God gave us two books. He gave us the book of God's words, the Bible, which I read every day and which I trust to give me great truth, but which in many ways has parts that I don't entirely understand. But that other book God gave us, uh, the book of God's works, nature, which science allows us to uncover, is also an opportunity to learn about the nature of God, to worship, if you will, what hmm. God has given us, and to get a glimpse of God's mind when you discover something new about the universe. So how could that possibly be a conflict of truths? Well, let me press you on that. I mean, the, the, the Genesis would leave us to believe that the Earth is 6,000 years old. Um, and it would lead us to believe that God created two human beings, one out of the rib of the other. It's pretty explicit stuff. We interpret it as explicit these days. It is not a textbook of science. <laughs> it would not have suited God's purposes to lecture to his chosen people about radioactive decay and, and uh, such things as DNA. What God was trying to teach us uh, through those words is the nature of God and the nature of humans, and that comes through loud and clear. As a believer and a scientist, how do you deal with some of the larger claims of Christianity, such as the resurrection? The big question is, do you believe in God? And do you believe a God who is the creator and the author of everything we see? Once you've accepted the idea of a God who is the creator of all the laws of nature, the idea that God might, at unique moments in history, decide to invade the natural world and suspend those laws, doesn't become really a logical problem. And certainly the resurrection, as the most dramatic example of that, where God became man, walked this earth, was crucified, and then after death was resurrected, that for me is the cornerstone of my faith. And it doesn't present a real problem as a believer as long as I've already acknowledged that God is God. Dr. Collins has just started up a new organization called BioLogos. That's a made-up word, but the, uh, the goal of this organization is to try to bridge the gap between faith and science. He knows it's going to be a tricky job. That's all for this week. See you.